And she cooked something she hadn't been able to eat in years because of the problem. She slept soundly for the first time in years. She, when she went back to the doctor, she, she had a regular checkup for this heart condition. The doctor was astounded. said, what have you been doing? Your heart's like new. And she told the doctor what happened. And that's when the doctor almost had a cardiac arrest because you threw the, did you have withdrawal symptoms? She said, none. And the doctor just threw up her hand and said, well, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. So do you see people getting new body parts often? Like I do. This? Uh, what happened in Singapore? Singapore was a little bit different. Uh, we were ministering at a church, and this lady uh, who had invited us to minister to this youth group was there, and at, after we had ministered to the youth and, and prayed for them, she said, well, I, I, I want prayer too. She said, but I'm not going to name anything. Well, I knew from an acquaintance what was going on, but I asked the Lord, what do you want me to do? He said, I just want you to take the sword of the Spirit and pierce her heart. Now, that sounds a little bit strange, and it's I'll, like a prophetic act. It was a prophetic act. So when he says things like that, I just do it. It, it looks foolish to man. L listen, you get those kind of results, go for it. <laughs> Absolutely. And so I did that. When I did that, she fell down. And what happened is the power of God touched her body, which caused it to short circuit. She fell down. When she got up, she said, oh, that was great, super. We found out afterwards, via the friend that knew her, that that brain cancer was gone. That is so phenomenal. Now, we talked about the seventh day, that promises are going to speed up. But when I think of the seventh day or the Sabbath, I think of rest. What does that mean to us practically if we're entering the morning of rest? I'm glad you asked that. The day of rest speaks of ceasing from our own works, just as God did from His, that's Ephesians, or excuse me, Hebrews. What that says is that we have to learn to be led of the Spirit and stop being led of a program or a formula. Those things, at the worst, can lead to stagnation but at the, and witchcraft, but at best will cause people to just get stuck in a rut. But if we learn to be at rest by doing what he says to do, when he says to do it, how he says to do it, we will see an acceleration in the fulfillment of all of these promises and we'll see greater creative miracles, signs and wonders. Well, it seems to me when the Messiah says over and over again, fear not or be at peace, that there is a supernatural, this is what I've been pondering lately, there's a supernatural place and it's called peace. And we can walk into that place. And is that not the morning of the seventh day rest that you've been talking that, about? Absolutely, that's a facet of it. Rest and peace are a little bit different. Um, but on a whole, that is exactly what God is saying. The more you trust somebody, the more peace and rest you have around that person. So the seventh day also speaks of an, a tremendous revelation of intimacy with God. We're coming into that place of such intimacy with God. Well, the things of this life pale in comparison when you've seen the Lord. And when you see what He's prepared for us in that realm, you're not worried about looking foolish to man. You're not worried about pleasing man. You're not worried about reputation. You're doing this because you love God, because you have an audience of one. Yeah, you know, I'm thinking of, of the scripture that says, yet once more, yes. I'm going to shake this earth. And those that are not on a firm foundation, when it shakes, guess what happens? You're going to fall. However, those that are, have entered into that morning of the seventh day rest, they're, 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 they're going to literally be in a euphoric state of peace and intimacy with God, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. It's a bastion of peace. I, I like to provoke people this way. The worst the world can do is, is threaten us with heaven. So it's win-win. Okay, are you ready to win-win? Me too. Don't go away. You're going to find out. As a matter of fact, I'm going to ask Bruce to pray for you when we come back. Be back right after this. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural! We 
we now return to It's Supernatural! Hello, Sid Roth here with Bruce Allen. Bruce, tell me about the time, and I'm sure this has happened many times, but you were caught up into heaven and you saw someone you knew. Yes, yeah, that was unusual. I was in a season of prayer and just worshiping God and suddenly I was in heaven, paradise. And there was great activity going on, like bustling. I don't know how to describe that. Almost like Christmas in a mall. And all of a sudden, Almost like all the activity is going on because the holiday or the events about ready to happen, you have to get everything in yeah. place. So there's a lot of activity going on. Much in activity. Heaven. Yeah. And my aunt, who had died about seven years previously to that, walked up, and she was all excited. She said, "Bruce, it is so exciting." And I said, "What's so exciting?" She said, "The preparation for the marriage supper of the Lamb is almost complete." And heaven is abuzz with this news and excited because it's the culmination, the completion. And she said, and not only that, many individuals are visiting heaven from earth right now to go back with the testimony that people should be prepared because he's coming back shortly. You know, that's the message I'm hearing from many people, yeah. that he's coming back soon. But the thing that's so unusual is even children are carrying this message oh, back. Yeah. There was a young girl in Singapore that had been in one of our meetings where we were teaching your birthright is to see and go as a Christian. And she caught the revelation and began to be caught into paradise. And at that particular time, I was visiting, I saw my aunt at that time. I saw this young girl, this, she was eight years old, appear off to my left. She looked at me, smiled and waved, grabbed the hand of Jesus and it skipped off with him. Hmm. A year later, Sid, I'm back in Singapore and I happened to have dinner with the grandmother and the, of this, and she, and she was there and she said, I saw you in heaven and you were talking to your aunt. She now, knew. Now, now that, that really blows some of you out of the water, but read the book of Revelation. I mean, read these visions that people have had, that Paul had. Uh, tell me about this congregation in Malaysia. On that same visitation with my aunt, I saw an angel off to my right standing in heaven with what looked like a Torah scroll, but I came to understand was a manifest. He was the angel that had charge and authority over all the resources of heaven that God had reserved for this generation. So I was ministering in Kuala Lumpur in a church, and they were in a building program for a new church. And while I was ministering... Now, they, by the way, that's a good angel to know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all the resources for this generation. He, he appeared in the, the meeting. I saw him there and began to prophesy that, you know, as believers, we have that manifest. You know how we activate it? We speak it forth in faith, and it comes immediately. And so as we prophesied, they were taking pictures. They had learned to do that because cameras catch a lot of things. And they caught the picture of that scroll exactly where I saw the angel standing. So needless to say, I was excited about that. It's one thing to have visions and people believe you, but God gave a tangible proof and evidence of that very thing. This is so amazing. It's Hebrew lettering. So a year later, what happened to this congregation? They built that church. I, I don't know if it was within the year, but within two years, I know for a fact. God supernaturally and sovereignly would bring in the resources consistently as they needed it. Sometimes the bank account would be empty, there was the money, it would show up. They'd, some, sometimes they didn't even know how. Other times people would give large sums of money. And so they built that church very quickly with no debt and there was a lot of extra money left over in the church. Now has God shown you anything that's going to happen in Israel? 